Let me tell you a little funny story. So the other week I went shopping at my local fabric store. It's a great little warehouse, absolutely full of fabric and bolts. Um, and I'll pop the link to that actually in the description box. So I went shopping with this idea in mind that I was gonna get some double gauze and I love double gauze. It's such a great fabric, really soft, love the texture of it. And I wanted to get a few different options so that I could make a few different things in, in the fabric. I took them home and my nan was at home and I wanted to show her my fabrics because it's like a little child, I got a new purchase and I thought oh, I really want to show her what I bought. So I got out all my fabrics, laid them out and what I didn't expect was for her to hone in on one fabric like a lion for its prey. She just absolutely went into this one fabric and was just like oh it's so pretty, I love it so much. And it was a dazzle fabric which was my favourite one. So it's a white background with the gold dots on top. And in that moment, I just knew I had to make her something in it. I just, it, it just, I could not make her something in it. So I sort of took on, you know, I thought, mm, what could I make that she would like to wear? So she doesn't really wear things like dresses or skirts. Um, she's more trousers and tops. So I thought it's a perfect fabric really for a summer top. I have a few things in mind design wise for this top. So I want to keep it nice and loose, uh, not form fitting at all. I kind of want sleeves, three quarter length sl sleeves maybe, um, but this will probably change as I go along. Um, and yeah, it doesn't need too much fluff or flounce about it because it is just a lovely fabric and I want that fabric to show off um, rather than have too many different elements to it that's going to take away the really pretty appearance about it. So I also don't want to tell her that I'm making a t-shirt, I want it to be a bit of a surprise. So. I've, what I've done is I've sort of borrowed one of her t-shirts and actually just taken her measurements there. So I've got a rough idea of the measurements um, that I need to make this top in. Um, but of course, you know, it's going to be loose fitting so I've got a little bit of leeway there as well. I need to make a pattern because I don't have anything that will suit what the design I have in my head. So what I've done is I've actually chose, I've actually bought some newspaper print and you can get it really cheaply and it's a great piece of paper to use for patterns because if you go wrong you can just recycle it um, and if you make any mistakes then you know it's it's fine because it's just it's really cheap paper. Um, of course it doesn't have with like pattern paper it doesn't have the dots or the markings but that doesn't really matter so much if you you know if you just make sure that you measure everything out. Because I was slightly unsure about the fit I mean all I've done is taken one of her t-shirts and actually took her measurements from that of course I'm working with like a jersey material with that with the um, t-shirt that I'm copying from so of course it's a little bit more stretchy so I need to make sure I added in enough ease that she could actually get it over her head um, and put her arms in without without needing that stretch so I wanted to do a mock-up first in a similar material a woven non-stretch material so that she could try it on without actually knowing kind of the end product of what it's going to be um, just so that I could have a look at the fit. The material really nice to cut out but it does fray really easily I mean this is a loose loose weave fabric I mean it's two layers of gauze and it's really really loose it's not tight at all so it frays really easily everything needs to be seam finished even you know just it just needs to be seam finished I use just a zigzag stitch I don't have an overlocker um I do have the overlocking foot to go on my machine and the stitch to go with it but really a zigzag stitch is just fine I mean it's in the same colored thread so you don't actually see it that much and it's a ni it's a nice neat finish so I love the double gauze but I've never worked with it before so sewing with it um was a new experience it's a lot springier and spongier than what I thought it would be. I mean, it is two layers of fabric, but those are lo loosely woven pieces of fabric. They're also textured. So it's a bit more springy than what I expected. So I had to make sure that when I was actually pinning this, I was pinning it properly. Um, nice, I used quite a few pins actually just to pin it together. Um, and then obviously pushing it, letting it go through the machine, it needed to go really nice and evenly. Time for the sleeves. So I made it so that I needed to put some gathering stitches on the top of the sleeve, just add some ease in there. Um, and I did this by just hand sewing it. I mean, if you were doing the same thing, you could machine baste it. Um, but for me, just hand stitching, hand basting it was just easier. So it's time to do the hem. When I do hems, what I generally do is I fold them up and I iron them into place so that I know that they won't move. But because this fabric is so textured, I was trying my best not to actually iron it. Also, um, if you are going to iron it, you want to do it on the reverse because 
I did iron the facing of the of the neckline when I was folding up the the edge and once I put the iron on it those metallic dots just disappeared <laughs> they just disappeared and I just you know I just thought ah okay this really isn't a fabric that you should iron um, but you know it is a textured fabric the the texture makes it you know makes it a double gauze so you don't want to get rid of that anyway um, a few it doesn't actually crease that easily either because it is those two layers of fabric and it is quite spongy so you can definitely get away with not ironing this fabric and I really really wouldn't iron it so at the end I make sure that I tell my nan that when she washes this garment she must not iron it at the end for the face and I just took the pattern that I'd made and I just traced out that neckline um, and then made that did that for the front and the back and that just gave me facing that I could just put on the neckline just to keep it a little bit more stable and once I'd put that facing on I top stitched around the edge about two millimeters in from in from the actual edge um, again spongy fabric springy fabric so it was quite difficult to make sure that it wasn't actually going off offline um, something else also is that this material I mean I couldn't really get a sharp point on, on that on the opening at the front I didn't it didn't matter too much because it actually looked quite nice being soft if I mean I probably could have done if I just trimmed it up a bit more but I actually quite liked the way it sort of curved around a little bit um, sort of fitted in with the with the blouse really so I finished off by hand stitching the face into the neckline with just tiny stitches and what's really good because it is those two layers is that you can actually just really hide those stitches you can just pick up one layer of fabric and not two and then you don't see any of the stitches on the outside I put the elastic in the cuffs I made the channel in the cuffs and then I just threaded the elastic through and this just gave it a nice gather around the around the arm um, I didn't want anything that was loose and floaty because it sort of it would get in her way so I thought well a nice sort of elasticated cuffs that look quite nice gathers up the material lovely and does show you know that nice ga the gathers that you can get with the fabric I very quickly made some ties so this was using some of the scrap fabric that I had left over from when I cut out the patterns I just had a, a light, nice long strip of fabric so sewed that in half turned it round and then gave it um, sewed up the ends I just attached this to the neckline uh, with just like a little square stitch once that was all done it's really all finished so I then took it to my nan and I showed her got her to try it on and there was just one final adjustment that I needed to make and that was just move the sleeve up slightly it was just a little little bit too long for my liking so I thought oh, I'll just move that up yeah and then when that alteration was done it was all finished uh, she tried it on again and she said she says she likes it so that's always a plus so I should have enough material left to make myself maybe a top out of it or maybe a pair of shorts um, but it was really nice just to make this uh, this top for my nan because I know she really really liked the material so hopefully she can you know wear it in the spring and summer that's it all done thank you so much for watching don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you'd like to see more of these videos thanks again for watching